Hello and welcome to this introductory video series looking at programming and using Arduinos. In these videos, we will talk about what an Arduino is, how to program it, and look at some of the different projects that can be built using Arduinos. But first, what is an Arduino? Put succinctly, an Arduino is an open source microcontroller. But what does that mean? Open source means that all the details and schematics are freely available online, and as such, there is a large and active community working with Arduinos, as well as a wide range of boards available from different manufacturers. Here, you can see two different Arduino Uno R3 style boards. The black one is made by Aligu, and the red one is a Cduino. Some manufacturers choose to add additional connectors and functionality to their boards, but they all follow a standard layout and can all be programmed and used in a similar way. Arduinos also come in a range of sizes. For example, this is an Arduino Nano. It's perfect when you're trying to keep your build size down. So that's the open source thing out of the way, but what is a microcontroller? A microcontroller is best thought of as a small computer on a single chip. This means that the CPU and memory are all there inside the chip. This Arduino uses an Atmel Atmega 328P for its microcontroller, and you can see that written here on the chip. The other parts of the board are the input-output headers which are around the outside. There are six analog pins labeled from A0 to A5, and 14 digital pins labeled from D0 to 13. You may have noticed that computer people like counting from the number zero. Some of the digital pins have a tilde next to them. This means that they can be used for pulsed width modulation. The simplest way to think of pulsed width modulation is that it is the digital approximation of an analog signal. Finally, these headers over here can be used to supply 3.3 or 5 volts of power, voltage in, and ground. Some of the other components on the board are the four status LEDs. There's the power indicator LED that lights up when the board is turned on, the transmission and receiving LED, they light up when information is either being sent to or taken from the board, such as when we are reprogramming it, and the onboard LED, which is connected to pin 13. This small integrated circuit here is a USB to serial converter, which lets us program the board through the USB port. This button here next to the USB port is the reset button, and when pressed, will restart your board's program from the beginning. This long silver component contains a 16 MHz crystal, which provides the board with a way to approximate time. Other onboard components are things like diodes, a voltage regulator, a fuse, capacitors, and resistors. Almost all Arduinos come with the program Blink pre-installed on them. When you first power them on, either through a USB cable or an external power supply, you will notice that not only has the power indicator LED turned on, but that the onboard LED is flashing on and off every second. If you have ever done programming before, you most likely started with Hello World. Blink is the Arduino's equivalent of Hello World. We will go into programming in more detail next video. For now, we'll just take a very cursory look at the code for Blink. There are two versions of Blink you may encounter. In the first version, you will define the LED pin as being pin 13. In the other version, it will reference the onboard LED. Since the onboard LED and pin 13 are connected, both programs have the same result. Down here in this bottom section is the actual meat of the program. What it is telling the Arduino to do is turn on the LED by setting its voltage to high. Then wait 1000 milliseconds before turning the LED off by setting its voltage to low. The program then waits another 1000 milliseconds before going back to the start and setting the LED voltage to high again. 
So what are the advantages and limitations of the Arduino? The primary advantage is its simplicity. The header pins make it very easy to quickly connect, test, and prototype different circuits. And because they follow a standard layout, additional components known as shields can easily be attached to incorporate additional functionality. Here you can see a standard Arduino and one which has had a prototyping board shield expansion attached to it. When we get to the video with the robotic car, you will see a different type of shield that adds an infrared sensor as well as connectors that make it much easier to connect the cables of the other components. The Arduino programming language is based on C and with such an active community, it's very easy to find tutorials and forums to help you with your build projects. The major limitation of the Arduino is its simplicity. When you program an Arduino, you ask it to perform a single task over and over and over again. Compare this to your home computer, which can be used as a word processor to surf the web, send and receive emails, play games, all without requiring you to uninstall and then install the new program. The website Make gives the following rule of thumb, which I think is a really good one. If what you're trying to do can be described using fewer than two ands, you should use an Arduino. If what you're trying to do requires more than two ands to describe, you should look at something else, such as a more robust single board computer, a phone app, or even a fully fledged home PC. So that's enough for this first video. Next time, we'll learn how to program the Arduino and write our first bit of code together. Until then, I encourage you to look around and see the many cool projects people have completed using Arduinos. And then think about what you'd like to do with an Arduino. And let me know about it down below.